check in. It's the Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Made him perfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the Raggy Dolls and say I just don't care. Cause Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Are happy just to be. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. It was Saturday morning, and the Raggy Dolls were up in their treehouse, wondering what to do. Nothing exciting had happened for ages, and no one had any good suggestions. I'm bored, declared Princess. There's absolutely nothing to do around here, especially on weekends. There's not much to do in the week either, agreed Sadzak. Except hide in the reject bin. Gosh, what a gloomy pair you are, said Dotty. We'll soon find something to do. Yeah, no problem, said Back to Front. But for once, his mind was a blank. Sadzak yawned a big yawn. <sighs> so did Hi-Fi. <sighs> and before they all knew it, each one of the Raggy Dolls couldn't stop yawning. <sighs> Lucy giggled. <laughs> oh, my! I'm beginning to think that yawning is catching, just like the measles or some other germ. <sighs> so do I, yawned Dotty. Oh, dear! How can we stop it? Somebody think of something quick before we all yawn our heads off. At last, Princess had an idea. I know! Let's take that trip to London, we promised ourselves. There's sure to be lots to do in London. Good thinking, said Dotty. The Raggy Dolls made plans. They would hide in the factory van the next time it went to the railway station. And then they would catch a train. Nothing could be simpler. Or so they thought. It was strange how quickly the weekend seemed to pass by once the Raggy Dolls had made up their minds what to do. As luck would have it, the factory van was going to the station first thing Monday morning. The Raggy Dolls sat on the boxes and held on tight as the van bumped and swayed on its way through the town. So far, so good, said Dotty. Yeah, no problem, said Back to Front. Soon the van pulled into the station yard and the Raggy Dolls could hear the driver getting out. They held hands and thought of a magic rhyme. As high as the sky, as deep as the sea, I can see you, but you can't see me. And just as the back doors opened, the Raggy Dolls disappeared from view. The driver quickly loaded up a trolley with boxes and wheeled them off towards the train, with the invisible Raggy Dolls sitting on top. As soon as everything was loaded into the train, the Raggy Dolls made themselves visible again. As high as the sky, as deep as the sea, I can see you, and you can see me. And in the twinkling of an eye, the Raggy Dolls reappeared. Here we are, said Back to Front. No problem. London, here we come. Mais oui, agreed Claude. It was, how you say, a piece of cake. Sadsack was looking at the label on one of the boxes from the toy factory. It was addressed to Mr McGregor, Highland Souvenirs, Inverness, Scotland. And so was the next one. And the next one. All of them were addressed to Mr. McGregor. The others were still busy congratulating themselves on the success of the plan and making themselves comfortable. Um, excuse me, said Sadsack thoughtfully. If we are going to London, why are we on the same train as these parcels? What do you mean? demanded Dotty. Sadsack pointed to the labels. They're all addressed to Scotland. Oh, no! exclaimed Lucy. We must be on the wrong train. No sooner had she spoken than a loudspeaker made an announcement. The train now arriving at platform three is the 1025 for London. The Raggy Dolls looked at one another in dismay. They were on the wrong train and it was just about to leave. They could hear the guard slamming the doors. Quick, said Back to Front, this way. 
he had managed to open a window. The guard blew his whistle and climbed aboard. A long line of mail trucks was towed away. Friends and relatives waved goodbye to each other. Everyone was so busy that nobody noticed the raggy dolls jump from the window into one of the mail trucks. Phew, said Dot. That was a narrow escape. Well done, back to front. No problem, he shrugged. All we've got to do now is get to platform three. The London train had only just pulled into the platform and people were rushing about all over the station. Luckily for the raggy dolls, the driver towing the mail trucks beeped his horn to make way through the hurrying passengers and took them straight there. In no time at all, the raggy dolls were on their way to London. Oh dear, sighed Lucy. I'm not sure I want to go to London after all. I think I've had quite enough excitement already. Sadsack was just as worried as Lucy. He looked out of the window at the telegraph poles whizzing by. Even if we do get to London, he thought, what are we going to see? All of the raggy dolls were thinking the same sort of thing. After the shock of nearly catching the wrong train, they couldn't help letting their imaginations wander. They thought of all the things there are to do in London. They saw Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament, visited the waxworks at Madame Tussauds, watched the changing of the guard outside Buckingham Palace, saw the Beefeaters and the Crown Jewels at the Tower of London. They fed the pigeons in Trafalgar Square, had tea and buns at the Ritz, they even had their own special box at the opera. The raggy dolls were all fast asleep when the train pulled into the big London station. The guard was surprised to see them in amongst the parcels and mailbags. He thought they must be lost property. Gosh, stoner crows, he muttered. The things people leave on trains. Before they knew what was happening, the raggy dolls found themselves being lifted up and dumped into a cardboard box. <gasps> What's happening? whispered Lucy anxiously. Shh, hissed Dotty. I don't know. We must have fallen asleep. Everybody freeze. Oh no, thought Sadzak. I might have known something like this would happen. The guard took the box of worried raggy dolls straight to the lost property office. He gave them to another man who put them on a high shelf next to umbrellas, shopping bags, gloves, hats, and all the other kinds of things that people leave on trains. <laughs> it's all my fault, sobbed Princess, as soon as the man had gone. If I hadn't been so bored, none of this would have happened. Cheer up, said Back to Front. It's not your fault. All of us were bored. We all wanted to come to London. Quite right, said Dotty. And now we're here, it's up to us to make the best of it. At least we have a roof over our heads. Yes, stammered Hi-Fi. No, 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 no one knows we're here. We're quite safe. The raggy dolls cheered up and once again thought of all the things they could do in the big city. After all, they had a nice big box to sleep in. Everyone seemed far too busy to notice them. And as long as they didn't fall asleep again, they could do more or less as they pleased. Even Sadsack was looking forward to some new adventures. As the raggy doll settled down for the night, he didn't feel homesick at all. When you think of it, he thought, one reject bin is very much like another. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your normally knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls.